Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Today's Everything Music is called Meldau, Baron, and Essen, High Information Lines. We're going to take a look at three of the greatest jazz pianists in the world and check out their lines. The first piece we're going to begin with is a tune called Annie's Bittersweet Cake. It's a live version of it with Brad Meldau playing with Pat Metheny. Brad's actually playing solo and he's playing over an ostinato bass, but we're going to check out the lines that he's playing over it. So here it is. Okay, what was that? Let's check it out again. All right, there's some really interesting things that Brad's doing in this. There's a lot of sub changes and there's some really cool harmonic devices he's employing, one of which is an A Lydian major arpeggio, and he starts on the fifth on the note E. He moves up through that and then goes into some different keys. So let's check out the transcription of it along with the music. Okay, let's slow it down a bit and check it out with the music again. This next line we're going to look at is by pianist Kenny Barron. It actually is from a gig with Brad Meldow, a duo piano gig from 1999, playing the Charlie Parker tune Billy's Bounce, which is a blues in F. This is the beginning of about the fifth chorus or so, and you'll know that Kenny starts with an F bass line and then goes into an E add nine arpeggio. And it comes down A add nine. So E add nine to A add nine. E add nine is a, a tonic diminished sound resolving to A add nine, which is a leading augmented sound. The E add nine is not exactly a tonic diminished sound because you don't have an add, you don't have add nine chords in the tonic diminished scale, but he's implying E major over F. And it's a really interesting change. Check it out. Okay, let's take a look at this line up to tempo with the transcription. Okay, let's slow it down a bit and check it out with the music again. There's a couple other cool things other than the E add 9 over F and the A add 9 over F. He plays, he goes, he's playing a, a G dominant diminish. Then he goes, that's called an enclosure. We haven't talked about that yet. I'm going to do a whole video on that. It's uh, the double chromatic approach. So he has a target note of C and he plays. He plays, he starts from a whole step down from the target note, and you play the whole step, up a half step, then up a minor third, then down a half step, then down a whole step, and then up a half step. That's called the double chromatic approach. You've heard me play it in, in uh, videos before. You've heard a million bebop players play it. That's one of the most common lines that there is. It's called an enclosure. You're surrounding this note C, we call it a double chromatic approach. So let's check it out one more time. This next line is by the great Aydin Essen. You may not have heard of him, but Aydin is one of the greatest improvisers alive. Um, I thought of this particular idea because it's over an F pedal, just like the Kenny Barron. This is actually from a lesson that Aydin taught 
uh, a student 30 years ago and I was demonstrating what you can play over an F pedal in the same kind of thing. But this is much more sophisticated than, uh, than the things that we've heard so far. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Okay, now let's listen to it with the transcription. I've done a recreation of it so that you can see the notes that Iden's playing. What Aiden's demonstrating here as he's improvising is the concept of modal mixture, where it's playing multiple modes over the same chord. In this instance, he's playing it just over an F bass note, but he's, he's implying all these different sounds. He's implying F major pentatonic, F ionian, F leading, F leading augmented, F tonic diminished. But the lines are really sophisticated. He was showing him how you can use this and do really wide intervallic playing as well but notice all the internal resolutions that are happening all the all the lines that are resolving within themselves in the line let's check it out i've i've uh, played it slow here with the uh, transcription so let's listen to it Let's listen to it one more time. Let's listen to it one more time with the transcription up to tempo. For those of you that want to hear more of Aiden's playing, I have an example further down on my channel here of Aiden playing over a C pedal tone, just recorded with a cassette player, once again, 30 years ago in my office at Ithaca College, when we were just hanging out, and I said, hey, it was right after you played the F pedal, and the kid walked out the door. I say, Aiden, why don't you do uh, improvise on a pedal again, playing a C pedal? and he just starts playing and you, you'll hear the thing. It's unbelievable. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, which has examples of all these concepts, here it is right here, 300 and some odd pages with many, many examples of modal mixture of all the concepts I talk about. I tell people that what's in the book is the stuff that I talk about in my videos here. If I read the, the chapter one, interval names, uh, and harmonic intervals, chords, building diatonic triads, uh, major scale, melodic minor scale, harmonic minor scale, suspended triads and three note structures, chord scales, families, and this just keeps going on. Reharmonization and chord structure, common tone reharmonizations, reharmonizations of standard forms, voice leading, dominant tonic resolutions, tons and tons and tons of things. Playing over two five ones, turnarounds, turnarounds, substitute patterns, circle of fifths, hybrid arpeggio, seventh chord superimposition, triadic superimposition, playing over unusual resolutions, melodic studies, and so on and so forth. It just keeps going on. So that's the Beato book. If you're interested in getting it, write to me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.